I wasted a whole month in Damascus searching for Saul. Every day I listen to you pleading for his safety. Now you will be quiet. Reuben Saul would not have come to Jerusalem. If he didn't die in the desert, he will be here in Jerusalem. And if he is here, I will find him and I will kill him. And none of your lies can save him. The temple! He isn't there. We searched the city. Okay, four, secure this gate. No one leaves till I say so. these men at prayer. A criminal against God and country is here, Gamaliel. Your favorite student, Saul. I will find him and I will kill him as God demands. Because his mind is open enough to investigate the teachings of another Pharisee? He teaches lies. Isn't that enough for you, Gamaliel? Reuben. I know you are doing this because of your belief in our God. I do as God commands. God commands the death of another? God has commanded the death of many of our people, Gamaliel. Any who will not obey his law. And are you convinced that God wants the followers of Jesus dead? He teaches Jews to ignore God's law. There is no greater threat to our belief or our country. I'm sorry, I have no money. Liar! You're a rich man. You grow wonderful melons and squash. I did once, but no longer. I gave it all to... A courageous man saved your life, and you repaid him with two tiny melons. Saul? Saul? Saul! We thought you were dead. We watched the patrol run after you in the desert, and when you didn't come back... I thought I was dead. I walked for days, no water. Only God saved me. Come in. Mary will feed you, Saul. Paul. What? I'm not the man called Saul anymore. I don't want his name to scare believers again. I'm a new man with a new name, Paul. Good. It's the Roman name my father gave me along with my Jewish name, Saul. Paul of Tarsus. It means small. 
Hopefully it will frighten no one. <laughs> a new name will not make the difference. I know. I must meet Peter. I must convince him I'm sincere. If you will. They're afraid of you. Is he here? No, no, much too dangerous. Everyone knows this house. Robin has returned to Jerusalem. I know. If he finds you, he will kill you. I'll take you to Peter. Come. I must warn him first, but I'll take you to him. Come in. Rest. Eat. I'll come for you soon. watching to see if we're alone or followed. The arena? <laughs> Easy place for them to make sure it's not a trap. Come on. Come on. Barnabas. Peter. This is our most feared persecutor, Saul of Tarsus. But he wants to bury that man and give birth to a new man called Paul. He helped murder Stephen. James he was very close to our Lord. He arrested dozens and stabbed Amos to death. That is all true. Ah, you admit it. I ask God to forgive me. Why should we believe you? Jesus came to me, spoke to me. Don't use his name. It's true, James. Paul was on the road to Damascus to arrest believers. True. On the road, he was struck by a white light and heard the voice of Jesus. I asked who he was, and he said, I am Jesus whom you are persecuting. It's the truth. How do you know if it's the truth? I've heard him speak in the synagogue, talk of his love for Jesus, of, of his awakening. Talk, talk, talk. A trick to get to Peter and John. Perhaps. But if it was a trick, it worked. I am here. Peter. Jesus blinded me. For three days. Then I had a vision that a man named Ananias would come and bring my sight back. That very day it happened. I know that to be true. How? Because that very night, I baptized him. I don't want to endanger you. You don't ever have to see me again. All I want from you is your blessing and your permission. Permission? To speak the good news of Jesus. <laughs> fine, fine. Then they will kill you, just like you killed our people. Jesus told Ananias that I was chosen to be his instrument. To bring his name before Gentiles and before the people of Israel. You. I watched him grow up. I was by his side when he started. I watched him die. I watched him go into heaven. And he has chosen you to bring his name to Israel. I have spoken the truth to you. I give you my blessing, Paul of Tarsus. And I give you my permission to speak of the master. But I warn you, if there are lies in your heart, your soul will perish. You are speaking of God himself, the Messiah, the Christ, who will come again soon and establish his kingdom. The Romans will not save you, for they will be defeated. The priests will not save you, for they will be condemned if they have evil in their hearts. God's will be done. Yes, Barnabas. God's will be done. And it will be done, my friend. It will be done. So, my friends, I bring before you a man you never wanted to meet. A man who has persecuted the followers of Jesus, arrested us, even killed us. 
His name was Saul of Tarsus. Oh. Oh. Now, now he is called Paul. No, no, listen, listen to him. Do not fear. I believe in Jesus as the Messiah. Jesus spoke to me on the road to Damascus. He blinded me. He told me to stop persecuting him. When this mortal body puts on immortality, then the saying that is written will be fulfilled. Death has been swallowed up in victory. Where, O oh death, is your victory? Where, O oh death, is your sting? The sting of death is sin, and the power of sin is the law. But thanks be to God who gives us victory through our Lord Jesus Christ, my brothers. You descendants of Abraham's family and others who fear God. To us, the message of this salvation has been sent because the residents of Jerusalem and their leaders did not recognize him or understand the words Soldiers. of the prophet. His coming fulfilled Soldiers. by condemning Soldiers. him. Soldiers! Paul will speak to you again. Any idea what the vows of Rome are like? They're glorious, not like this sewer. <laughs> Rome killed Jesus. Now you've allowed him to be reborn by your friend Saul. I do not want Rome to hear of this rebirth. Stop them now. <laughs> You must leave Jerusalem at once, Paul. Tonight. I'm not afraid of Reuben. It's not just Reuben. The Hellenists want you dead, too. You're in danger from all sides. I didn't trust you, Paul, and I was wrong. You've shown your dedication to Jesus, but there's no need to tempt God. It is not cowardly to prevent your own unjust death. I have no problem being cowardly if it saves my life. You pretend to be weak, Barnabas, but you are a very strong and brave man. <laughs> Bring Reuben into the room and watch me run. <laughs> <laughs> I am leaving Jerusalem, Paul. It is time to spread the word. I am going to Lydda. I am sending Barnabas to Antioch. Only James will stay here to see to the believers in Jerusalem. So where do you want me to go? Tarsus. You want me to go home? The most difficult assignment of all. A prophet is seldom appreciated by his own people, hmm? Even Jesus was not accepted by the people he grew up around. You must continue to teach the good news. In Tarsus? Without Barnabas at my side? Don't worry, Paul. Jesus told us the Romans will be defeated and that he would return soon. The end of the world is near. We must be found at his work when he returns. Peter, please don't misunderstand me. I will do as you wish. But when I heard Jesus' voice, he said, you will be told what you are to do. Yes. He told Ananias I was to bring his name to Gentiles. Saul. Sorry, Paul. Jesus was born a Jew. He was sent to the Jews. That is God's plan. Jews first, then Gentiles. But it will be hard for them. We have many laws that they must learn. <laughs> yes. What to eat, when to work, circumcision. <laughs> These will be hard lessons. In time, Paul. The end of the world is near. Jews first. Then Gentiles. In Jesus' name. In, In Jesus', Jesus name. name. I love you, Reuben. And I love you.
thank you, Ruben. For what? For marrying me. It's my pleasure. I hope. Later tonight. I know you hated me when I lied to you. Those days are forgotten. You're free to believe as you want, as long as it is as your priestly husband dictates. <laughs> to apologize for all the times I've treated you badly. Ruben. No, 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 it's true. I tried to saddle your spirit, and I never, ever want to do that again. I may even have been wrong about Saul. Ruben. I want you to be free. Free to think as you want. Because I love you, Dina. them, Peter? Yes, James, I did. Why? They are Gentiles. I told you, as I was speaking to them, the Holy Spirit fell on them. I was astounded. The Holy Spirit poured out even to the Gentiles. Jesus said, John, baptized with water, but you will be baptized with the Holy Spirit. God gave them the same gift that he gave us. Who was I? To reject God's voice. So I ordered them to be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ. And I stayed with them, slept in their house, and ate what they ate. So, we are to baptize Gentiles and eat unclean animals with them? My vision said, nothing is unclean that God has cleansed. No, no, I will never do it! It's your choice, James. I heard the voice of God and he told me to put this prejudice away. Prejudice? <laughs> Law, given by God to Moses. And now you want to replace it with the law as given to Peter? You think too much of yourself, Peter. I glorify God, not Peter. And God has given even to the Gentiles the repentance that leads to life. story about Jesus are you going to tell us today? Jesus walks on the water? <laughs> <laughs> I told you that story too many times. Let me tell you about his crucifixion. Sit down. Listen. For months now, I've heard of war in the temple, priest. War, my lord? Jew plotting to kill Jew. Men waiting at the gates to kill other men. Jews in prison at your orders. Men fleeing Jerusalem to escape death. We have the situation under you control. You have nothing under control. You've allowed these Jesus followers to cause chaos in the city. I assure you, my lord, there is no chaos. And we have a plan. We must find the leaders and kill them publicly. A very good plan. 
Yes, that's what you keep telling me. But have you found them? Not yet, my lord, but we will. <laughs> How? Rubin has a way. Oh, do tell me. I have someone inside the sect, my king. A spy? Not exactly. <coughs> Explain. Someone who will lead me to their leaders. But he doesn't know he's leading you to them, does he? No. Splendid. Who? Answer me. My wife. Your wife? Your new wife? My only wife. My, my. <laughs> I thought I was without love, but I pale in comparison to you, Ruby. The scourge of Jesus must be stopped. His followers ignore the law. They teach of everlasting life, never-ending life, and people believe them. Stopped, yes. At any cost? My wife will forgive me when she sees how wrong she was. It is a husband's duty to correct the errors of his wife. Well, well, yes. You bring me the leader, and I will kill him. So the Jews will be happy, I will be happy, and Rome will be happy. Only Reuben's wife will be unhappy, <laughs> but you can fix that, can't you, Reuben? <laughs> Dina, I heard that Saul is teaching crowds about Jesus. Is that true? Why? Well, don't worry, I'm not going to arrest him. I don't care anymore. Well, the Sanhedrin doesn't care, and the High Priest doesn't care, and the Jesus followers they threaten no revolution, so they may live as they want. I only ask because if he is teaching, it must mean that the Jesus followers have accepted him into their sect. Apparently. Oh, this amazes me. See, if they can accept a man who arrested and killed them, then they will accept most men. I've been told they only care if you believe in the teachings of Jesus, nothing else. So they would accept even a priest who arrested and persecuted them? Reuben, are you telling me? Perhaps. Perhaps. Do you believe? I need instruction to know what I believe. I can tell you many things. No, my love, I don't mean to offend you. But I'm a priest, schooled in these things for many years. You're not qualified to answer my questions. I need the counsel of someone who is my equal. A leader in the movement. Someone who walked with Jesus. Yes. Yes. is guilty of blasphemy, sedition, treason, and other evil acts. The penalty is death. Reuben, you must stop this. I can do nothing against the power of the king and the high priest. Then I'll stop it. Dina, there is nothing to be done. I carry out this sentence in the name of Rome and in the name of God.
Reuben, did you like the dance? I am a priest. Oh, yes. Thou shalt not watch the lascivious exposure of human flesh. <laughs> Religion. I've called you here to compliment you on your exemplary work finding the Jesus follower. And you know what the most amazing part of that event was? The crowd. They loved it. They loved watching me kill that Jesus dog. Especially your friends, the priests. I was amazed. I've been getting compliments about it for days now. I've never been so popular in Jerusalem. So, my priest, I want to do it again. A politician's first rule is to please the people. Well, <laughs> actually, that's not quite true here, is it? The first rule is to please Rome. <laughs> and I want you to help me. You should be High Priest Reuben. Oh, yes, 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 yes. The High Priest is a fool. You are what I need in the Sanhedrin. And more importantly, you are what the Emperor needs. I'm going to recommend you to Rome. My God demands that those who break the laws given by God be punished. It's God's law, it's not Roman law. Anything else would be the destruction of my beliefs and my country. High priest is not my goal, justice is my goal. Justice? Well, yes, that's what we all want. And we will have it as soon as you find me, Peter. Peter? Simon called Peter. That's what my spies tell me is the name of the number one leader. I want him. Bring him to me. You can do that, can't you? For justice. Reuben. High priest. Well, where is the girl? Lead her to me. Or shall I have the boy? <laughs> Perhaps I will have both of them. Oh. <laughs> with the execution of James, son of Zebedee. And now, I bring you the leader of Jesus' followers. May he be the last. I give you Simon called Peter. <laughs> Reuben, my high priest. Will you execute him now, my king? No, 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 no. He's too valuable. That's the mistake I made last time. I had only one showing with that James. I want more. I'll keep this Peter in prison and bring him out any time I need the crowd behind me. March him through the crowd and then throw him into a cell. My king. Under heavy guard, Reuben. Heavy. Lose this one and you won't be priest of anything. Despair, child.
Scott will be victorious. I led them to him. To James, to Peter. I led them. Reuben pretended to love me just so I would lead him to them. Then you have to pray for him. And for Peter. God would never hear my prayer. Jesus taught us a prayer. Do you want to learn it? Yes. Our Father who is in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Your will be done. Oh! Paul, oh, Barnabas, <laughs> look at you, working like a slave. <laughs> I pay my own way, Barnabas. This is important work, Paul, but God needs you. Paul, I believe God needs you. So do I. So? God told Ananias, I will show him how much he must suffer for the sake of my name. I'm frightened. <laughs> You're frightened. And I'm envious. Envious? God has called you, Paul. And perhaps the road will be hard. But it's God's road. We will spread the word together. has escaped from prison. I'm not responsible for his escape. Of course not. I had men sleeping on either side of him. Of course. They must have been bribed. Of course. There were men at the doors. Of course. I will find him again. How? Your wife didn't look very happy with you. And I'm not very happy with you. Even the high priest is not very happy with you. So you have told our king that you will be a better high priest and calling me a fool. You have 10 days. 10 days? To live if you can't find him. This Simon Peter. What is his name anyway? Simon or Peter? His name is Simon, my lord, but this Jesus called him Peter. Why? That makes no sense. Simon, Peter, they're two completely different names. But Jesus, sir, he was a man. Obviously. Get out. <laughs> Open the gate. It is your king who speaks. Go away, you filth. Who was guarding Peter? And who was outside the cell? Draw your swords. Kill him? If you don't kill him, I will have him kill you.
kill him? Kill him! Would you rather he kill you? Cyprus, Paul! Cyprus! Salamis is on the northeast shore. <laughs> you love the sea too much for a tent maker. It's my road to God's will. God's will? God wants me to tell the Gentiles about this. Yes, Paul. We must be careful. They have their own God. No. We must never be careful, Barnabas. We must rush in like bulls. We must crash through their pagan gods like this boat through the sea. Oh. We will tell the world about Jesus all the way to Rome. Rome? Rome. Why are you washing clothes with the slaves? To punish myself for your crimes. I had to do it. Get away from me. They want to destroy the law. They want to destroy our way of no, life. No, you did that. I love you. <laughs> Jesus taught forgiveness. Don't speak to me of Jesus. You are my wife! I am a widow. If I don't bring them, Peter, I will be killed! For me, you are dead already. citizen who betrayed Rome. You are alive only because King Herod is dead. Find Peter, kill him, and I'll let you live. I can't. I thought you'd say that. So sail for Cyprus. How do you know this? Rome knows everything, priest. Follow him. These men will accompany you. You will kill Saul, or they will kill you. <laughs> to you, therefore, my brothers, that through this man, forgiveness of sins is proclaimed to you. Through this Jesus, everybody who believes is set free. Do you believe what I'm saying, friend? I want to. What stops you from believing? We have many gods here. I've prayed to them since I could speak to heal me, but none can. How long have your legs been like this? Always. Do you believe Jesus can heal you? He can. I can see you believe he can. Stand up on your feet. Oh, 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 oh,
come to us in human form. carry out God's punishment for your crimes. You will die by the stone according to his law. You are not my judge. We are fools for the sake of Christ. We are hungry and thirsty. We are poorly clothed and beaten. We are homeless, and we grow weary from the work of our own hands. When reviled, we bless. When persecuted, we endure. But God proves his love for us, in that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. Because if you confess with your lips that Jesus is the Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you'll be saved. As you all know, I try and tell the truth at all times. Even when I know it is not a truth, that everyone wants to hear. Tonight, we are all happy that Peter has been here with us in Antioch for the past month. And we are glad that Benjamin and others have brought good tidings from James in Jerusalem. But, but, some of us are engaging in a hypocrisy since Benjamin arrived. Some of us used to eat with the Gentiles in this group, and as soon as Benjamin arrived, they shunned the Gentiles. This is hypocrisy. Who are you speaking of, Paul? You. And Peter. I'm sorry, Peter, but it's true. As soon as James' people arrive from Jerusalem, you pull back from the Gentiles. 
You are afraid of criticism because of the controversy over those who are circumcised and those who are not. It's a very serious question. To some, perhaps. To me, it is a mockery of Jesus' teaching. It is the law that believers must be circumcised. Believers in the law? You're abandoning the law? When Gentiles, who do not possess the law, do instinctively what the law requires, they are the law unto themselves. What the law requires is written on their hearts. Many who follow Jesus believe that they must accept the law also. Christ is the end of the law. The end of the law, so there may be righteousness for everyone who believes. This is too serious a question to decide here tonight. There should be a meeting of all the elders to decide this question. Barnabas is right. We will meet in Jerusalem in one month's time. This is very dangerous. This is my temple. I will come here whenever I want. You're a stubborn man, Paul. I'm not afraid. I am. Unless you are circumcised according to the custom of Moses, you cannot be saved. But we're not talking about Jews, we're talking about Gentiles. The law does not bend Gentile or Jew. Moses is very clear. We've always said that we follow the law. Moses' law. Even Jesus said to follow the law. But he also said to be tolerant of the differences of each man. The law has no tolerance. Barnabas and I have found many wonderful things in our travels. Jesus, who's called Christ in the lands to the west. And the believers are called Christians. <laughs> Christians. Oh, we like this word. I think Jesus would like this. You are all Christians. <laughs> the law, as Moses gave it to us, is not known among Gentiles. When we tell them about the law, we're always careful to explain it as a way of living which is good for all not as rules which must be followed. Gentiles have their own rules, and Barnabas and I have found that many are the same as ours. Different words meaning the same thing. Yes. God's commandment to do unto others as you would have them do unto you is the law by which all men must live. It does not matter if they are Jew or Gentile. But specific laws like circumcision are very difficult for Gentiles to accept. Demanding the Gentiles eat certain foods or wear certain clothes is not important, in my opinion. It's only important that they understand and accept Jesus and the teaching of Jesus. But didn't Jesus teach the law? He did. But you have told me that he said loving one another was the heart of the law and that we are to be more concerned about what comes out of our mouths than what goes in. My brothers, Paul's argument has changed my mind. No, Peter. Peter! God knows the human heart, and in cleansing the hearts of Gentiles, he has made no distinction. Therefore, putting God to the test by placing on the neck of disbelievers a yoke which is not theirs but ours is not right. They will be saved through the grace of the Lord Jesus, just as we will. Will you join with me in this, James? It is important we be united in this decision. We should make a solemn proclamation which says that we have decided unanimously to no longer impose on Gentiles any burden of the law except, except to obey the commandments of God. 
If anyone is in Christ, there is a new creation. Everything old has passed away. Everything has become new. Amen. 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 Of Jerusalem. Yes. But we have to go back, Barnabas. Back? To the Gentiles. <laughs> you like being beaten with stones? Personally, I don't enjoy it. <laughs> it is our mission. Yes. Hagar will be very sad. Your wife knows your life is not your own. Yes, but she'll still find it hard to accept. I think it is good to remain unmarried. I love her. In that case, it is better to marry than to be aflame with passion. Let each of us lead the life the Lord has assigned. Yes. As God has called. <laughs> We're just at the beginning, Barnabas. We have a long way to go. Where do you want to go? Rome. Rome? Yes. But we will start in Greece. We won't be welcome in Greece, Paul. They have their own gods. I know. And, and you could put Rome out of your mind. It's ridiculous. Rome. <laughs> we will go to Antioch. No. Rome. We will go to Rome. Paul. It is my mission. Your mission is to bring God's words to the world. Rome is the center of the world. There are plenty of Gentiles between here and Rome. You have no faith in Christ. You have no right to say that. I have every right. No. You do not trust God. Every man has fears. Faith conquers fears. Tolerance. I have no tolerance for a lack of faith. I am not going to Rome. I am. Fine. Then you go on alone. Rome. This cannot be God's will. It is. I'm going. If you choose, without you. But I am going. Suicide is not God's will. And to try to teach about Jesus to the very people who killed him. Oh. Oh. He was raised from the dead and ascended into heaven. We know that all things work together for good for those who love God, who are called according to his purpose. For I am convinced that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor rulers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor powers, nor height, nor depth, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus, our Savior. To the God Zeus,
goddess Athena, to the unknown god, I see how extremely religious you are in every way. For as I walk through the city and look carefully at the objects of worship, I find among them an altar with the inscription to an unknown god. But noble men, the god who made this world does not live in shrines made by human hands as though he needed anything from us. He himself gives to all mortals life and breath. We ought not to think of God as an image formed by the art and imagination of mortals. God overlooks the times of human ignorance. But now, as man gains knowledge, God commands all people everywhere to repent because he has fixed a day on which he will have the world judged by a man whom he has appointed and who raised himself from the dead. Raised himself from the dead? and ascended into heaven, where he waits for the day to come, when we will all be judged for our belief in him. Jesus of Nazareth. My father has told me about Jesus. You say he raised himself from the dead? Yes. Are you the owner? I'm Aquila. I'm Paul of Tarsus. Tarsus? I'm a tent maker. My father has pits just like this. I felt I was home when I smelled them from over the hill. <laughs> Which is why we're outside of Corinth. City fathers don't think it's home when they smell these pits. <laughs> Would you like some water? Let's go and you friend some. This is Paul of Tarsus. He's a tent maker too. This is my wife, Priscilla. When I was a boy, I worked with my father till he sent me away to school in Jerusalem. Jerusalem? Do you know a prophet called Jesus? I travel the world telling people of him. We are Christians. I am home. Jesus spoke of love. Tell us what he meant, Paul. Love is patient. Love is kind. Love is not envious, not boastful or arrogant, or rude. It does not insist on its own way. It is not irritable or resentful. It does not rejoice in wrongdoing. It rejoices in the truth. It bears all things, believes all things, hopes for all things, endures all things. That is beautiful, Paul. Paul, you must stay in Corinth. We're new believers from Rome. We need a leader. Rome is where I'm going. I must go back to Jerusalem first and then to Rome. You can't go to Rome. No Jews allowed. What? Claudius drove us out. All Jews from Rome. That's why we're here. No Jews. You can't go to Rome, Paul. I'm on my way to Jerusalem not knowing what will happen to me there. Except that the Holy Spirit testifies to me in every city that imprisonment and persecution are waiting for me. But I do not count my life of any value to myself. If only I may finish my course and the ministry I receive from Lord Jesus to testify to the good news of God's grace. Remember, if I speak in the tongues of mortals and of angels, but do not have love, I am a noisy gong or a clanging cymbal. And if I have prophetic powers and understand all mysteries and all knowledge, and if I have all faith so as to move mountains but do not have love, I am nothing.
Law is the sin. You understand? The law will make you do something that is bad. Is it clear? So I tried. <laughs> so I tried again. Nothing. Rumors saying that you teach against Moses' law. Rumors. I don't deny the importance of the law, James. We had to live by it until Christ came. But we are no longer subject to it. The only thing that counts now is faith, working through love. This is very difficult for Jews. They grew up under the law, Paul. Yes, I know. Tomorrow. Today. <laughs> Today we have men who are under a vow of purification for seven days. I think you should join these men. Go through the rites with them. Pray. Cut your hair. Then everyone will know that it was true what they've been told about you. That you too observe and guard the law. Cut my hair? <laughs> A small sacrifice for a man who has been beaten for his God. James, I only came home to rest. Soon I will begin my longest journey. But I agree with you. It is important for the people to know that I follow the law. Where will you go? Rome. To the end of the earth. told me Saul was dead. Your own soldiers saw him stoned. He's alive in the temple at this very moment. How? Kill him. allow it. It is not God you serve, but your anger, your jealousy. Fellow Israelites, this is the man who is turning the world against our people, our laws, this place. He has defiled this holy place. Oh. No! Stop! Stop it! Stop it! Why are you punishing this man? He breaks God's law. He breaks no law! If he breaks the law, he shall be dealt with under the law. You have no right to murder him as you wish. This is a matter for Jews. Jews are Roman subjects, and in this land, I am Rome. Bring him. General! General, you shall follow my order immediately. Pick him up. Take it, take it. 
What am I to do with you two? Kill him. Why? He's a threat to Rome. <laughs> One man? He leads a religious sect that follows Jesus of Nazareth. He was crucified. They teach that he rose from the dead. I don't care if they teach, but he turned into a swan. They teach revolution against Rome. Is that true, Jew? Do you want a revolution against Rome? <coughs> He's harmless. Kill him. I decide what is done here, Gaius, not you. This man will not be killed. There is no reason. He must be flogged for inciting a riot. Yes, fine. Flog him. I am a Roman citizen. <coughs> what did you say? Born a Roman citizen. <coughs> a Roman citizen? Do you still want him killed, you fool? Bring him inside. So I bring him before your council. People want him killed, which I cannot allow because he's a Roman citizen since birth, a Jew. Yes, but also a Roman. You will decide the proper punishment, if any, for this man. Brothers, since the day I met Jesus, I have lived my life with a clear conscience. Blasphemy! Strike him in the mouth! Yeah. Uh. <laughs> God will strike you! Are you standing there to judge me according to the law? And yet in violation of the law, you order me struck! So. This is the head priest you speak to. If you follow the law, you know what is demanded. The law says you shall not speak evil of a leader of your people. And so I apologize. Brothers, I'm a Pharisee. I follow the law as you do. I'm on trial here not because of the law, but because of the hope of the resurrection of the dead. God has spoken to me. This is blasphemy. Quiet. Quiet. We find nothing wrong in this man. He follows the law. This man spits on the law of Moses. He teaches love. God teaches law. He teaches hope. God teaches obedience. Thank you. 
This man, this man must die. If we cannot do it within the law, then we must do it without the law. Brothers, there's sometimes a moment when the law cannot act, but when God would bless us for our courage. David knew this. Solomon knew this. They had the courage to act, and so must we. I will not eat or drink again until Saul of Tarsus is dead. Are you with me? I didn't have to make a meal for my stupid master this morning. Why not? He has taken an oath. He says he won't eat or drink again until that old Paul is dead. <laughs> I hope he lives forever. <laughs> Immediately, by my orders. Here. Well, what do you want, girl? Paul is to be killed. Jews. <laughs> it is a secret pact. When you bring him to the council tomorrow, they will ambush you and kill Paul. How do you know this? Women learn things. Good. I will send Paul to Caesarea tonight. Go on your way and tell no one of this. And, uh... Thank you. Romans. As a child, I spoke like a child. I thought like a child. I reasoned like a child. When I became an adult, I put an end to childish ways. For now we see in a mirror dimly, but then we will see face to face. Now I know only in part. Then I will know fully, even as I have been fully known. And now faith, hope, and love abide. These three, but the greatest of them is love. Paul, some news. The king is dead. That isn't news. And the new king comes to visit. Agrippa? In one week. I must get him to hear my case. Who are to be heard? Come forward. Your names? Paul of Tarsus. I am Ananias, High Priest of Jerusalem. And the charge, High Priest? 
this man Saul is an agitator amongst the Jews throughout the world, not just Israel, but the whole empire. He's also a ringleader of the indecent sect based around the fraudulent Messiah, Jesus of Nazareth. He has defiled the temple, refused the law of Moses, incited riots against Rome, and defamed the name of Agrippa himself, and... Love never ends, and Jesus lives, my king. Why is it so difficult to believe that the Messiah has come? He spoke to me. He told me to take his truth into all the world. I have followed his orders, saying nothing but what the prophets and Moses said would take place. That the Messiah must suffer, and that by being the first to rise from the dead, he would proclaim light both to our people and the Gentiles. <laughs> You're out of your mind, Paul of Tarsus. Too much learning has driven you insane. I'm speaking the truth. Do you believe the prophets, my king? <laughs> are, you, are you going to persuade me to be a Christian now, Paul? <laughs> Not only you, but all who are listening to me. And what other accusations are there against this man? I have in no way committed any offense against the temple, against the law of the Jews, against the king, or against the emperor. High priest, this man is doing nothing to deserve death or imprisonment. I appeal to the Emperor's Tribunal to seek my release. My king. You made a mistake, Prophet. I would have set you free today had you not appealed to the Emperor. But you did not trust my judgment. So now you will be required to go before the Emperor in Rome. <laughs> Very long journey for a man who should be free. May your God be with you. You will never return from Rome to preach your false message. Rome. Reuben. You have destroyed a man because of your ambition. You know nothing of my mind, Gamaliel. Your love for Saul has blinded you. My love for God tells me that he has many ways of showing us his mind. I believe in life after death, Reuben. I believe God knows our hearts. And I believe we will stand before him on that day and answer for our life. Shall I choose to serve him now? Not in some fantasy of life after death. Jesus was not the Messiah. I don't believe Jesus is the Messiah. But what I know for sure is that you're wrong. You don't have the true faith of Israel. I love this man. I'm sorry, friend. I'm sorry, too. Pride is such a stupid sin. Oh. Are there intelligent sins? <laughs> Paul. You saved my life. You saved my soul. Only God can do that. You showed me to God. Thank you. Remember, God wants us to forgive those who sinned against us. Reuben loved you, I'm sure. God has called me to Rome. I'll wait for you. I'm not coming back. 
He has told me. Please, God. <laughs> you do please God, Barnabas. You are a strong and good man. He needs you here. Me there. A hard task, Master. <laughs> Too hard for me today. I'll see you in heaven. I'll be there to welcome you at the gate. will see that I failed to silence him. I told you to kill him. My God, you're with me, even unto the end of the earth. It is written, those who have never been told of him shall see, and those who have never heard of him shall understand. 